Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be a pass or play edition on Flame Break. What is Flame Break? I did not know myself. I uh, found this basically from watching somebody else uh, on YouTube. It just happened to pop up. Uh, it looked interesting. I kind of love the uh, general art style. And uh, I love uh, top-down shooter kind of games. So I decided to check it out and grabbed it on sale of course uh, and so now I'm gonna basically run through it uh, and let you know what I think um, I have done a couple of runs through here uh, because this is essentially it's like uh, it's a roguelike or roguelite I guess is the correct terminology but it is like FTL but fantasy and top-down with some more action-y combat, essentially. So if FTL was a fantasy top-down action game, this would be it. And you'll see what I mean. The, the world map and how the stuff unlocks is very similar to FTL, uh, but the combat gameplay is much more action-y, top-down arena uh, kind of game. So... I could show you what I mean. There, there are multiple unlocks. I started a new profile, so I haven't unlocked anything on this profile now. But essentially, you can you can unlock new races. You start off with the four, uh, which have slightly different stats. You can unlock new weapons, which are abilities essentially that you know you use during combat. And skills is the same thing. So weapons and skills are like abilities that you get in combat. And when you start a new run, it basically randomizes everything. So you have a random race with random skills. Uh, and then you see as far as you can go. Uh, haven't got to the end yet. I've played maybe an hour and a half of it thus far. And uh, just to see what it's like and get the hang of the controls. So let's go ahead and jump right in here. So, like I said, you're gonna get you're gonna get a choice. You get to pick a couple things. You see, they start off with some. They start off with different abilities and the different classes, obviously. Um, so, whirlwind is like a spinning, spinning death kind of thing. Shock, shockwave is a stun that shoots out in a straight line. I'm pretty sure. Flame wave I haven't used yet. Skeleton mines is like you, like think of. Uh, old Diablo where you summon a bunch of skeletons except for these guys have bombs that run towards somebody else and what does the elf have ethereal projection is kind of a cool one where you you shoot out a projection of yourself and if you hit that button again you jump to the spot where you shot it to and shadow strike is like you jump to your target um, so which one should we go with I haven't used the flame wave yet, so I kind of want to try that out. I just played my last game I played. I played with both of these ethereal and shadow strike. So I'm going to do the minotaur. The warring hey. lords have warped the lands and forced the its beasts are to cool. fight. The ravaged souls that stalk the sands, the creatures of the night. But Pyrian the wise resides within the phoenix, free. And where his heart and spirit hides, your journey's end will be. So those remind me of uh, Trine for some reason, and I don't know if it's the narrator's voice or just the uh, the general feel with the music and the, the kind of a whimsical narrator. I don't know. It's kind of cool, and I loved Trine the first time I I played it and heard that. So you you start out and it gives you a chance to, to kind of check out all your abilities. The triggers, both triggers are your crossbow, and that's been the same for every character I've played. You always have a crossbow attack, although I think the uh, the actual attacks are somewhat different. Uh, wrong button. Okay, so you can mouse over and see what it does. So you have a slow, you have a slow and um, attack range. Okay, so if you you can upgrade it in certain places, there's little shops throughout the world. And then these tell you what these do. The radius, damage, but we're just going to test them out. Okay, so here's our flame break. 
and obviously it has a cool down. Um, so it also has this lock on thing. So you hold the triggers down and it locks on and you can use the right stick to change lock ons, which while very different, it works uh, pretty well most of the time. Some of the time you have a lot of enemies on the screen together and it's kind of hard to figure it out. Okay, so here's the skeletons. Oh, I'm sorry, that was our Minotaur run. There's our blowing up skeletons. Okay, so we have flame. We have our, our bull rush. We have our, our skeletons and our crossbow. Okay, I think we're ready to head out into the world. So this is what I was saying where it's very FTL-like. If you played FTL, when you look at the strategic map, it's it's point-to-point -point movement, and you're just trying to get to the end of that map. Um, unlike FTL, at the end of every map, there's a little boss. You can also have mini bosses along the way, and like FTL, you can have shops, but there's a bunch of different kind of shops in this game. And then you also have overland uh, items, which are these four things at the top. So you have healing potions, which you can't use in the middle of a fight. It has to be on the overview map. So, uh, which makes it interesting because you can't just heal automatically if you get low in a fight. You know, you could die. Let's see, uh, dust, which you activate before you move into a shop and it opens up more possibilities of stuff to buy. Warp stone, which lets you uh, jump further than one space. Right now I can only move one space on the overland map. And then the spyglass just reveals something. I haven't really used it very well. Um, maybe I should be using that more effectively. Maybe for spots that are kind of blocked off and you're like, is it worth it to go over there? I guess that's where you'd use the spyglass for. Um, and then the little triangle indicates that this is going to be a harder area. And so far what that has meant is that there, there's some, uh, some bullet dodging, like stuff flies across the screen as you're fighting and you have to dodge those things. Okay, so let's get going. Oh, also there's a little shadow wave that will move from the bottom to the top as time goes on, much like FTL where you have the bad guys chasing you. So you can't just hang out and clear everything. You have a limited amount of time to make it to the end of the boss run. So we're gonna go over here to try to just get some gold first. Show you how the game works. Our bull run, okay. Flame, die. Gotta remember my, my combat. Because every run is a little different, you kind of, it takes a little while to get back into the groove or to figure out exactly how this char particular character works. And you get bonuses if you finish flawlessly without getting hurt, basically, like that. And I, I, I guess it stacks. There's one of the shops I was talking about. So we're going to get some more money first, and you can see the shadow encroaching below. We're going to get money here first, and then we're going to go to the shop. Hopefully get money here. So I can switch targets if I want between these bottom up. Bull rush those guys. Nice. Oh, I didn't get a flawless. So I guess I got hit somewhere. Okay, and then we'll go to town and see what's up. I could have used dust if I had it. Yeah, I think I had a dust to reveal more options. So the cheese will uh, instantly heal you. So if you have option to go to a... Uh, a shop next, it's cheaper to use this cheese than it is to use one of the potions, which costs 35, although they're none available for purchase here. Okay, this uh, increases the air effect of dust. Okay. I don't want that. We're going to look for upgrades here. So there's also four gods. You can see this is Sepicles Necklace. There are... There are these four gods that are uh, raging against each other or vying for control. And... If you get their favor, whichever one you have the most favor of, you gain bonus stats. Um, so Sepicles is the, the speed one, which I haven't really gone for before. Let's see, I could go for health and up my skills. I like attack speed and movement speed. I like this one for sure. And I don't think we're going to go for any dust. We could also go for the health. Yeah, we'll go ahead and pick that up and move back out. We're gonna go here because we might have three turns that we can um, maximize our effectiveness on this map. 
before moving on to the next one. So much like FTL, you want to get the most out of the map because you're trying to upgrade your guy as much as possible so that he can fight all the bosses at the end. So if you run through the level, you're not going to be as powerful as if you took your time. Shoot that guy. There you go. Finish him off. So this, the last time I played the Minotaur, I thought it was pretty powerful. I'm getting that vibe again, but the, the first level is not, oh, this is a new mini boss for me. So the, the, I think there's like each, uh, each of the biomes or each of the levels can have one of two mini bosses, I believe. And I've never seen this one before. I've always seen it's Cassia, I believe is the name of the one I always get. Finish him off. There we go. Now like, these should be easy enough to finish. All right. Got some gold. So spirit. Like I said, I started over. I'm now spirit level one. I was up to three after three runs in the last game. So you gain it pretty quickly. But this will. Uh, spirit is your unlock. So the forest rivers flow, the waters weave and wind. The shifting shadows creep and grow above, below, behind. Before the final fallen trees, beyond the forest fates, upon the hollow, haunted breeze, the northern passage waits. The northern passage. I guess, and that's where I'm going now. Oh yeah, northern passage. Okay. So we have a shop right off the bat. I could go up and then down, but then you, you don't get any I don't think you can go back through the same area so I'd have to use a warp stone so we'll just go to the shop first now here's what I was talking about if I had a potion it would be cheaper to get the cheese and heal up than to use a potion at that point okay so we can get attack speed skill mastery and cooldown I think cooldown is gonna be good with this guy because his abilities are very damage focused and I always like to pick up the potion if I can I don't need a warp stone Okay, and then we've got to be, we don't, we've got to be careful through the, uh... These guys, when they're shielded, you can't hurt them, so you have to wait for their shields to open up. Flawless victory! The combat is, uh very fun to me up to this point now I mean I don't know it's a roguelike so I guess it could get old but um, it's extremely fun of course I love these top-down games anyway so normally I would say I'm probably gonna enjoy this so the jewelry items are like set pieces that you can collect throughout and if you match up they come in these jewelry shops each one gives you a you know much like uh, RPGs that each piece gives you bonuses, but if you get the whole set, you get a set bonus. So this is up to skill mastery, and then reduce cooldowns if you have the set. This gives you a stun. Attack damage is good. Cooldown reduction. So we could go for the a, a cooldown reduction build, which we've already kind of started working on. I don't know. We could try that. See if the flame and the and the skeletons and stuff. We just kind of spam our abilities. To get through okay so this is like a little mini game level which pops up every once in a while you have to shoot the hook out and try to grab these just the just the gold ones the ones carrying gold and I think the first ones are probably easier because the last ones I played on like on the third level were much more difficult so I gotta wait for him to come by snag him on the back uh oh uh oh oh and it has a cooldown yeah Oops. Got him. All right. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, I don't have enough to upgrade the skills. See, so this is where the hourglass could have come in handy. If I'd known this was up here, I could have saved my money. Because what this shop does, it allows you to upgrade your four main skills. But you have to pay for the upgrades. So we're going to zigzag up here. Hopefully get some money. And before we move on to the shop, you guys are like, they're like elf ninjas. 
shooting throwing stars. Elves shooting throwing stars. Yeah, this Minotaur is powerful. The flame and the and the bull rush, powerful. All right, so I don't need healing. I could I think I'm gonna pop the dust. And uh, maybe that'll give us another option here. Although I don't have that much money to spend. So pro this would give us Proctus's favor. And I believe he get he has damage reduction. So we'll take that. And all these things stack. Um, I can't see my... Oh, yeah, I can. Up here. Oh, but it doesn't give me the tool tips. Normally, it'll give you the tool tips. I guess I can only do it in the shop, maybe. Oh, yep. So... Getting hit by the, the frost clouds there. Yeah, that flame strike is... The bomb. All right, and mini boss, or no, not mini boss, big boss, big boss. So who's it gonna be? It's it's Kanye. <laughs> Is it Konyan? Konyan the Barbarian? I'm not sure what they're. I'm not sure if they're going in the. So these little things will pop up and shoot at me. Ow. Hit by the, the shrapnel mines there. Ow. Got hit again. Watch out. Dodge. Dodge. Dip, dive, duck, dodge, and dodge. All right. There we go. All right. So we got some more spirit. The northern spirits fall and fade, and in the black of night, a single power splits the shade in silver streams of light. It turns upon a flaming tide of embers, burning gold. To watch you brave the pass with pride and walk the steps of old. And so the phoenix looks below, on wings of crimson red. An arid wind begins to blow. The desert waits ahead. The desert. We have 126 gold and I don't really want to go... Well, you know what? I'm going to use one of these. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so I could make my way up here and hit that shop eventually, which is what I think I'm going to do. So there's how the spyglass can come in handy. All right, Mr. Boomerang, we got the Australian elves over here. Oh, oh, you don't have range to get me. Flawless. So now I have a choice. I could use my health potion. Unless I think I can make it through the next one without dying. I'm not going to chance it. I'm just going to go ahead and use it. It's only like 25, 35 gold to buy a new one. Okay, so this is a defend mission. These guys are going to try to come out and steal. The little goblins, all you have to do is shoot once and they'll turn around. But the big ones you actually have to kill. Kill him! Kill him! Oh, he stole one. Get away! My gold! So one got away, but that's not the end of the world. Okay, so we have 166 gold. Am I going to be able to make it through up here? I don't know. I may have to use the warp stone. Okay, so they didn't give me any more health potions. I've got speed increase in health. That's always good. And attack damage in health. Okay, I'm going to go for the speed. And uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snag both of these. going to snag them both. Okay. Hmm. So I could activate dust to reveal a hidden... So I haven't ever done this before. Reveal a, a secret treasure lair hidden in the mountains. 
Okay. But I had to do it out of necessity, so... Oh, ow, ow. Look out. Look out. Kill this guy. Yeah, I don't think so, Mr. Wizard. Ah! Ow, ow, ow. That hurt. I thought the wizard was causing him to do that, but I think they were just, it was just units on their own. So that was the secret lair. It wasn't very secret. I still have time. I think I'm gonna go up, then down, and then around to get here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put a cut here. So thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time. Goodbye.